Welcome to The Savvy Scribe, a podcast for freelance healthcare and medical writers who want to start or grow their business. Your hosts, Carol Bush and Janine Kalbach, will help you build a profitable health writing business without having to spend years figuring it out on your own. Now, let's join the conversation. Hi, everybody. Today, we have Elizabeth Haynes on the show with Carol, and Elizabeth is the owner of Haynes Healthcare Communications. She is one of the number one people I found when I first started freelance writing. This is an amazing interview. It goes through everything from the abundance mindset to hair wedding versus pivoting. Take a listen and enjoy the show. So Savvy Scribes, Welcome back to the show. I'm so excited today because I know my guest has a lot of fun and personality, and she's probably going to drop some wisdom on us or a joke or two. And I'm so excited to have Elizabeth Haynes, the nurse who knows content. And I love that tagline. She's the CEO of Haynes Healthcare Communications, and she specializes in producing marketing content that forges an emotional connection with the target audience while also keeping the Google bot happy. And isn't that what it's kind of about right now, right? The whole Google eat rating. (laughs) (laughs) I have a real, uh, well, first of all, Carol, thank you so much for having me on. I'm very honored to be here. And anybody who's worked with me knows I don't have a personality. (laughs) But um, I have a real thing about uh, how much crap content is out there because it's all been written to appeal to the Google bot and none of it is written. Well, I don't want to say none of it. A lot of it is not written to appeal to the people who are actually reading it. So yeah, we bridge that gap for sure. Yes. And I think that's why I know that, uh, One of the things we like to talk about and share in the story while we're interviewing folks, I love interviewing people that I've connected with. And in healthcare writing, in the profession, I've connected with a lot of people virtually. So I know that you and I first connected via LinkedIn. And I actually, um, probably like many people, and you've heard this story before, I'm sure, I did the internet search nurses and writers because I was guest uh, guest blogging for the Oncology Nursing Society way back in 2009. And I came upon your name as a nurse writer, professional nurse writer, and your website at that time, RN to Writer, I believe. Isn't that correct? Yes. I, I had self-branded. I had the elizabethhaines.com domain for a long time. That was my original one. And then I thought I was going to branch out into coaching other nurses who wanted to become writers. So I created rn2writer.com, which I think is defunct now. I think I took Mm -hmm. it down. But anyway, um, and yeah, just started throwing stuff up there about, you know, how you can do this. I mean, if I can do this, anybody can do this more or less. Um, Did some coaching, um, learned that I was not a good coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I stopped doing that. Um, But I know that I, I know because people told me I did help a number of nurses get started in this business. And I'm really proud of that. As well, you should be. And I think the thing, and this is a lesson maybe that we can learn as health writers, was we did not even know each other, but I connected with you via your writing and your content, and you were crafting something of value. Is uh, an important lesson, I think, um, that we could like to pass on to beginning uh, professional health writers. And speaking of that, you might talk a little bit about what what uh, led you to start writing. So I think what will surprise people about my background is that I was a writer before I was a nurse. So I started my career in PR and marketing and then did a bunch of middle management things. And then I went back to school and became a nurse. And I was a nurse for several years. And 
I realized that my favorite part of nursing was actually the patient teaching. And I came home one day and said to my late husband, um, I can only work with maybe six patients a day, and it's very frustrating. And he said, yeah, but with an article, you could reach a million. And I said, well, that is correct. So I left nursing and went back to writing. Well, I did what I advise people to do. I started doing freelancing again on the side until I had my business ramped up, and then I left nursing and went back to writing full time. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so... (laughs) Anyway, but most people who meet me think that, you know, I was a nurse for 20 years and it's like, no. Mm-hmm. So. But, but isn't that the case that we can really change so many lives? Uh, plain language writing changes lives. And I don't exactly remember where I saw that, but I love it. And, and you proved it right there that um, it does. And how prophetic that your husband had that foresight and saw that. Yes, he absolutely. Ahead. He was definitely ahead of his time. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing is that he said um, was as a nurse, you've got that inside knowledge that makes the content accurate, especially communication to what we now call healthcare consumers, but anybody searching the internet, because there is a lot of information out there that is just not that accurate. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, clinicians make excellent writers when they have the writing skills because they also bring that um, validity to it. And in your journey, and you mentioned that you were originally in marketing and PR, became a clinician, and then were like, oh, hey, I'm going to go, you know, full cycle uh, back. Um, Tell us a little bit about your journey, or was there a, a career philosophy that maybe you've developed as you've pivoted throughout your career? You know, I believe in two, two guiding principles, I think I would say, for my career, abundance and generosity. So abundance um, to me means having the mindset that, first of all, it is okay to charge for your writing, your talent. A lot of people have a hard time uh, believing that that's okay to do or acceptable, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And also generosity in terms of helping out other writers, because I would not have gotten where I am without people like you who so generously share with me tips and tricks and tools Um, I freely share with other writers leads and also tricks and tips and tools. Um, And that to me is what builds the community um, that makes all of this possible for us to do. Mm -hmm. In terms of the business side of things, I think that also is an excellent way to serve clients. Uh, I don't believe in nickel and diming clients to death. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one example, I had a, a client send me something the other day that was just frustrating her she said can you please take a look at this and see what you think and can you fix this and it literally took me 15 minutes you know and she's like send me a bill and I'm like I'm not billing you for that (laughs) now a lot of people would be aghast at that you know on the one hand people are like oh no I don't really think I can charge for my talent adequately but on the other hand there are people who are like, you should charge for everything. I think there's a happy medium in there. I think you can have an abundance mindset and still be generous. Let me put it that way. And those are the two principles that I've tried to live my business by. And I think those are great principles. I know I've always had the philosophy that whatever I throw out into the world is what I'm going to get back. Doesn't mean it's going to happen in 24 hours or five days and maybe six months or years even. Um, And you brought up one really uh, common, uh, I guess, question that I get a lot from uh, not only beginning health writers, but even the mid-journey, the whole pricing and what do I charge and that kind of thing. What do you think, especially because over time you developed an abundance mindset and this happy balance, what do you think led you Because at first, did you feel like that and you had to develop some maturity in your 
um, in your work and your negotiation skills, what led you to really feel solid about your place? I think that what helped me was really thinking of my business as a business. Um, I'm going to sort of speak to women because a lot of the clinicians who write, well, all the clinicians I personally know who write are women and a lot of freelance writers are women. And they see themselves as an artist, uh, a creative, which is fine. I consider myself those things too. But you have to be a business person first. And if you paint a painting, if that's your art, and you want to make a living at that, you don't give your paintings away. And you don't go sell them for five bucks. You know, you um, put them in a gallery and you price them accordingly and you sell them. Um, and so when I started thinking about my business as a business and started conceptualizing myself as the CEO of Elizabeth Haynes Inc., basically, it became a lot easier to think about pricing and how to price and do things like market analysis and what will the market bear and where am I at and what are my differentiators and <laughs> what value do I bring? I mean, you have to think about all those things to arrive at your price and there's no one way to price. There's no right rate to, to charge. It's all on you, but you should be fair to yourself as well as fair to the clients. I think mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. Folio is our gallery our website, uh, our LinkedIn profile, the whole gallery aspect also brings to light thinking about when you're in the gallery, you have personal relationships, you establish the personal relationships with people, and you're presenting them the options and letting them choose. And that's actually what sales is, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And when I was coaching nurses and I mean to a certain extent I still interact with new new writers nurses who want to write by email um, I tell them you have to get comfortable with the idea of sales and that immediately puts a lot of people off and it it doesn't have to because you're not a used car salesman no offense to the used car salesman out mm -hmm. there um, you know you're selling a valuable service that your target audience, your target market wants it. So you're not trying to like trick somebody into buying something <laughs> that they don't want. But yes, you do have to become comfortable with that. I tell people when I started my career, you know, I'm going to say 75% of my time was spent marketing and selling. It was not spent writing. Mm -hmm. And if you're not good with that, you're not going to make it. That's just it, plain and simple. I'll just be blunt. You're not going to make it if you can't market and sell yourself. So, I, I do see a lot of people with the changes um, to, like with the internet has afforded a lot of collaboration platforms and marketplaces. So with the marketplaces, that's awesome because you can search. But I don't know. This is my own uh view that I see and it might be uneducated so I definitely love your take on it some of the marketplaces I see that it's like driving the price and skill level down rather than like up leveling and uh I don't know what what do you see we should get some podiums up here because now we're going to have like yeah. a political <laughs> debate going on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I'm not a uh, uh, expert in economics, but what I see is um, I do understand supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And there now, with the advent of the internet, there's a massive supply of writers um, to fill any demand out there. And when um, that happens, uh, prices can go down. Mm -hmm. I also believe, and I know a lot of writers don't agree with me, I believe that there is a, um, what can you say, a wage ladder like there is in any other career profession. I think if you're just starting out, it's okay to charge less. I don't think a penny a word is appropriate. Right. You know, I think you, if the spectrum for a blog post of 
let's say a 500 word blog post, let's say the market rate ranges from $200 to $1,000, depending on experience, and you're starting out, then you charge $200 to $300 for that. And you also need to then increase your rate as you get more experience. And a lot of people don't do that either. Like they mm -hmm. think they need, they still need more. They've been doing it five years and they're not experienced enough. It's like, yeah, you are. But anyway, <laughs> yes. And then I think when you get to a point where some of us are, you can charge that top tier, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it uh, does pre present a lot of options. It's a, uh, the marketplaces. Um, it's a great way for people to get some portfolio work. But then, as you said, as you're advancing in your career and really looking at high value clients, it's important to establish those relationships, be comfortable with selling and uh, charge what you're worth, what you're worth. Yeah. And I wanted to pick up on your use of the term relationship, um, because I think that is the absolute key to building a viable business in this profession is it's all about relationships. It's not about one-off sales, you know. It, it's about interacting with people, networking, getting to know them, getting to know their needs, establishing those relationships, and then delivering uh, a high-quality product that allows you to have a fruitful business relationship. Yeah, and this alludes to your, um, your abundance mindset and being, uh, you know, I guess, giving also. Uh, of others or supportive of others is when we have strong relationships with colleagues because as solopreneurs you know life happens right we get sick our moms have heart attacks you know like family things happen uh, you know husband spouse whoever gets laid off stuff happens and sometimes you need a team so as a solopreneur often having a trusted community or tribe uh, and I know that you have collaborated with others and I have as well. Can you talk to the development? We're segueing into relationships a little bit more, but what helped you ha have the maturity level? Because it does take a level of maturity to be like uh, transparent with others who could be quote seen as competitors, but I have the philosophy that there's plenty of work for everyone. Um, how did you arrive at uh, the point in your career when you started working or partnering with other health writing or um, marketing professionals? I think you make an excellent point about um, there's a lot of jealousy in our business, to be quite honest, or there's a lot of guardedness. Um, I, early in my career, approached a health writer whom I knew through an online group. So it's not like I was completely unknown to her and I wanted to pitch a market that I knew she wrote for. And I very politely and carefully approached her and she was livid mm -hmm. that I would ask her for an editorial contact. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought at that time, the lesson I learned was I don't want to be like that. Now, does that mean that I just spew out um, you know, right. all, <laughs> client, all the... give people my clients. No, I don't. I'm okay. saying there's a happy medium in there that you can hit. Um, and it does take a level of maturity, I think. Um, I, I think like a lot of people, I just developed that from being in the business. One of the best decisions I ever made is I'll put a little plug in here for freelancesuccess.com. Mm -hmm. I joined that group probably 20 years ago. And um, it, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. It was at the time that I know of the only group for actual bona fide free time, full-time freelancers. And um, I learned so much from them and they shared so generously and gave me the opportunity to learn and finally give back, which I still belong to that group and I still do that now. Um, so I think it's just one of those things where you have to gain some self-confidence by finding a little success and then you don't feel like, oh, I, I can't share this information or help other people out. Mm -hmm. This is a, a motto that I've always had, but I actually stole it from one of my oncology colleagues, oncologist actually, a cancer physician, a radiation oncologist in Southeast Kansas. I was part of a quality collaborative with him and he 
had, you know, just always coined the term when we were sharing resources with one another across cancer centers, we were competing and very jealous of one another. Um, you know, he says, hey, rising tides lifts all boats. And so I, again, think it's important. And that's why, I mean, really, that's why the Savvy Scribe podcast exists and why I do what I do is to help other people be their best, the best that they can be. Absolutely. And as you were speaking and talking about past experiences, it made me reflect on where did I originally get this mindset? And I realized I can tell you it's because my dad owned a hardware store when I was a teenager. And we never hesitated to refer people to other retailers if we could not serve them or couldn't please them or whatever. And I thought at the time, I couldn't understand that. I felt like my dad was giving business away. And he said, no, no, you have to please the customer first. And if you do that, they'll come back. And so it doesn't, it doesn't damage our business at all to help people get the service they need. And I think I've just, you know, writing is a service business. And mm -hmm. I think that's true. I help clients or prospective clients. If I can't serve them, I do my best to help them find somebody else who can serve them, you know, mm -hmm. and that comes back to you eventually. I just believe that actually really fun if several years down the line someone says oh hey thank you so much and oh by the way I need someone else now <laughs> absolutely yes that definitely happens definitely happens so I I just um, I, I love that whole um, also history that you grew up in an entrepreneurial family so that's awesome do you have any other entrepreneurs in your family no no. Well, not that I know of. Uh -huh. No, not my siblings or anything, just me. I'm so, the only crazy one. So one, one of my uh, best friends, Becky, who is a wonderful journalist in the Kansas City area, always tells me I bury my lead. She's my best editor. She always says, but Carol, every time you interview, you have to ask people about their failures because we love success, but everyone wants to know what was, you know, what did, what might you consider your biggest, I'll call it failure or challenge that you, the biggest lesson in your career um, that you got out of a failure or challenge? Oh, Carol. I know. There have been so many. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard how to do choose, we, isn't it? How do we pick just one? It really is. It's all learning. <laughs> yeah. I think um, in terms of Speaking from the personal business standpoint, like what has helped me as a business person, earlier in my career, I really did not know how to evaluate potential clients well. And man, I had some disasters <laughs> with, with clients where they basically fired me and, um, or I never got paid, you know, or... Mm -hmm things like that and so those are all learning experiences um, and help me hone my ability to evaluate um, you know what makes a good as you said high value client um, what makes um, a reputable client but beyond that what makes a client a good fit for me and vice versa because some of the projects you know, I'm at a point where I have the luxury now to turn down projects if they don't fit well. And that fit factor is so crucial in what we do. You know, if, if, if the way they work doesn't work with the way you work, if there's no meshing there, um, it's not going to end well for anybody. So the sooner you can identify those and help them find somebody that's going to be better with them, the better off you will be as well. And then it frees up your schedule for a, a client that works better for you to come in. So yeah, learning how to do that was very, very helpful. And there were a lot of disasters. So yeah, I, yeah we could spend a whole podcast on and it might not be very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> really? Exactly. No, and no. It yeah. might, I need to have to beep me out. <laughs> <laughs> I have, a, I have a few really like key learnings. I love fit factor. You could, that's a hashtag 
really. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hashtag. I know that recently you have made a pretty good pivot and you had uh, like you tweaked and relaunched a cool website, you tweaked some branding. How did you make that decision? Or And I know it hasn't been the first time you've done it because we pivot all the time to get to the fit factor. <laughs> <laughs> I like to call it a pirouette. <laughs> oh, I love you it. Know, because that's got a little more <laughs> flair. Um, yes, I rebranded my business. When I started out, I branded myself, which was true for a lot of writers. And that served me well. But I've been... Um, I had been contemplating for about two years how I was going to grow my business because I had sort of reached my max capacity as an individual writer and um, wanted to do more. And mm -hmm. so after a lot of thought, I decided the best way to do that was to become a small healthcare content agency mm -hmm. because that's what I'm an expert in. And um, go for larger projects, take on, you know, subcontractors and do project management, which, yeah, I'm just thrilled about that. But anyway, uh, that's going to be the best way to to do it. So, yes, I redid a whole new website, Haynes Healthcare Communications, although the URL is HaynesHealthContent.com. Um, and um, we'll see. I'm... Mm -hmm. uh, I in, invite inquiries from still anybody. I still use the same creative brief that they can fill out online, mm -hmm. but mainly I want to help small to mid-sized plastic surgeons, dermatologists, med spas, hospitals, like regional healthcare systems. I want to help them get a competitive advantage in the marketplace against the, the players in their marketplace that have the deep pockets. Mm -hmm. I'm always kind of an underdog person, you know, and like I want to get in there and give them my expertise to help them compete better. Um, so that's where I'm hoping this new venture will go. And I have some dynamite writers who have agreed to work with me and um so we'll see how it goes that's awesome and it, it's so fun when you can dig in and give value you know really get in with a client and their mission and something that you're passionate about it really does make it not like work i mean it's yeah dawn always says when are you done working and i have a hard time saying well never because it's not work <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, you're right. Um, turning off, turning yourself off at the end of the day can be challenging for writers. But you're absolutely right about the passion. I'm very excited to work with some plastic surgeons because I'm a former plastic surgery nurse. And people really misunderstand what plastic surgeons do. And I, of course, know intimately what they do. And I can't wait to help them communicate that to the public um, for, for their own benefit and watch them succeed. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Okay, awesome. To, I, I know that that actually helped me um, answer, you know, who do you work for and how can people get a hold of you? <laughs> But you might just really quickly for our listeners, um, for because we are, our audience is made up of high performing health writers and the clients who love us. So how can people get best get a hold of you? And it will be in the show notes, your live link. Thank you. Um, the, the best bet is through my website haineshealthcontent.com but they also can email me at beth b-e-t-h at haineshealthcontent.com they can find me on linkedin um, they can google my name um, i'm all over the place so it's not hard to find me <laughs> awesome. so when we're getting ready to wrap up uh, we'd love to end with if you have one or two or three things that people might be surprised to know about you? Oh, well, I shared one, which was that I'm actually a second career nurse. That surprises a lot of people. Um, I'm going to have to think about this for a minute because I don't, 
I don't think I'm that surprising, honestly, because as I was saying before we went on the air, I'm like shameless. Like I put, I put, I put my whole life out there on social media, <laughs> although I'm not friends with everyone on Facebook. Um, no. <laughs> let's see. I'm very into cocktail culture. I don't know if people know that. No. Uh, yeah no yes I love I throw cocktail parties all the time if you're ever in Albuquerque anyone look me up I'll uh -huh. throw a party just on your behalf <laughs> um and what else well I think that's oh here's something that maybe they would like to know I've actually been on tv playing a nurse you know, there's a lot of tv production that goes on in Albuquerque where I live. Really? And, uh, you, oh, yes. Years ago, I not only played a nurse on an episode of the TV show In Plain Sight, but I also was a body double for a male character <laughs> <laughs> on that show, which was incredibly fun. And I got to drive this old rickety pickup uh, down the street in Albuquerque, and uh, that was fun. But I never got to be on Breaking Bad, and that kind of bums me out. Oh, darn. See, that was my next question was, uh, so why couldn't you be on Breaking Bad? Huh. I, I binged I, uh, that like three times, by the oh, way. Oh, I know. I love that show and Better Call Saul. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't on that because I just wasn't registered with the casting company that did the extras. Exciting. I love I love that those surprising uh, points about you. Beth, I know that I think if I remember correctly, because I also stalk everybody on social media, that you are wrapping up your week to go on vacation. Yes. Get away, aren't you? <laughs> I'm taking a three-day weekend. My, can I say lame-ass? You might have to yes. bleep that. My lame-ass class, high school class, apparently did not pull together a class reunion. I'm not going to say what year, but it's a significant anniversary year. So I'm driving up to my old uh, high school hometown to meet my high school best friend, who I've only seen once in the past, you know, ensuing time period. And we're going to get together on our own. It's going to be a blast. Oh, awesome. Well, I know that you've worked really hard ahead of that to, like I say, you know, make your pirouette. Uh, pop out an awesome website with a, and you really need to go to her website because she's got a really cool tool about optimizing SEO. Download, Thank you. Right? Yeah, my ebook. Oh. Yes, mm -hmm. it's it's about how to hit that sweet spot between doing SEO but also making an emotional connection with the reader. So yes, please go download that. Thank you I, for mentioning that. Yes, I thought that I know that uh, because, like you said, you're transparent and you even tell people when you're working on things. I was like, oh, yeah, I can't wait. I need to go check that out. Definitely. Thank you. Well, I hope that you have a great vacation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, and thank you for having me on, Carol. I truly mean it when I say it's an honor. Well, thank you very much. And all of the links that Beth mentioned as well as to her website and how to get a hold of her will be in the show notes. So please reach out and go get your ride on. Hey everybody, Janine here. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to reach out to you guys and tell you about our Savvy Scribe Growth Lab. If you are looking for a strategic coaching program for healthcare writers that are ready to start mastering some foundational skills, and even land your first paid gig in the next eight weeks, you'll want to keep listening. Imagine yourself, you guys, at work on your third 12-hour shift. Your friend also picked up another 12 tomorrow. She will be burned out and not see her children, not see your family. But you know what? She is making more money. Now imagine yourself waking up tomorrow morning, getting a cup of coffee or tea, whatever you're drinking, getting your kids situated and opening up your laptop unleashing your creativity and ideas into freelance health writing. At the end of the 12-hour day, you and your friend probably made about the same amount of money, but in between, you were able to take care of yourself, time with your family, and become financially stable. That is why we started this program, you guys. Burnout is real, and we want you to be able to move into something different and use your health mind to do it. Carol Bush and I, the hosts of this podcast, are ready to support you guys through group coaching, trainings, co-working sessions, and accountability. We have a waiting list right now, and we would love for you to be a part of it. Just go to Savvy Scribe, 
growth lab dot write like you're writing something rn.net and we'll see you over there that's a wrap for today's episode of the savvy scribe thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed today's show we'd love for you to subscribe and leave a review on itunes or your favorite podcast app until next time